Populating your scenes with 3D assets, like plants, rocks, or grass, can be pretty tedious, especially if you do it manually. But luckily, Blender has some interesting add-ons that can make this way easier. Some give you lots of control, others just let you work faster, and some offer all that for free. Before we continue, I want to let you guys know that Superhive, aka Blender Market, is having right now their spring sale with 25% discount on thousands of products from add-ons, materials, models, courses, you name it. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Right out of the bat, let's start with the best Blender add-on for scattering, and that is GeoScatter. If you've done any kind of environment work in Blender, especially natural environments, you probably heard of it. Under the hood, it's basically a full-blown scattering engine with custom biomes, smart calling, and more settings that you will definitely need. GeoScatter works through a stack-based system, which keeps things non-destructive and easy to update. You can build complex scattering setups using slope masks, attitude filters, distance falloffs, and more. And you can always go back and tweak things without having to redo the whole stack. It is a solid setup for anyone who doesn't want to micromanage geometry. There is also support for layered scattering, so you can get that nice logic where moss grows under trees, rocks, and other areas without anything overlapping in a weird manner. With viewport calling, camera clipping, and LODs built in, it is optimized enough to handle heavy scenes without grinding Blender to a halt. You can even store biomes as assets which makes it way easier to reuse setups across different projects without starting from scratch. If GeoScatter is a full-on scattering engine, then Biome Reader is kind of its younger sibling, same developer, same scattering backbone, just a bit more streamlined and free. No catch, no trial. It is primarily built to work directly with Plant Library, which is a free library as well. Once you've got it installed, and linked it to that asset folder, it turns scattering into a one-click setup. You pick a biome, like forest floor, dry grassland, and so on, these kind of things. And it automatically populates your selected mesh with assets from the library. It handles density, distribution, and layering behind the scenes, but still gives you sliders for basic control when you want some tweaks. It also plays well with the asset browser, so if you don't feel like scattering a full biome, you can just drag individual plants into your scene directly from the library. Generally speaking, it is lightweight, responsive, and runs smoothly even in Blender 4.0, despite officially targeting 3.3 and up. It is mostly built, as I said, for the plant library, but if you're up for it, you can set up your own assets and biomes too, which is a great option. Next up, we have GScatter, which is a free Blender add-on from Grasswall 3D. This one focuses on quick and easy scattering, with some solid control options. It works well with Blender 3.2 and later versions as well, and it is designed to populate surfaces with assets like grass, plants, or custom objects. You know the drill. GScatter lets you scatter an emitter object, like a plane or a terrain, and then scatter assets from a built-in library or your own custom models. You can control the density separately from viewport and final render, which helps keep Blender responsive while you do your work. It also uses proxy instances in the viewport to speed up things, without sacrificing detail in the final output. One nice feature is the variety of effects that you can apply to your scattering, such as noise patterns to add natural variation in density and rotation or scale adjustments. There is also a camera calling system that only shows assets inside the camera view, improving performance when working on big scenes. In addition, you can avoid intersections between scattering objects by setting a minimum distance, and there is also weight painting for more precise control over placement. Also, GScatter's proximity effect lets you keep assets away or close to other objects, and I think this is useful for avoiding clutter around key scene elements. There is also a free scattering add-on called OpenScatter. It provides a range of basic scattering features, like controlling density, scale, rotation, and preventing objects from overlapping. You can organize objects into collections 
which helps create more natural and varied distributions. OpenScatter allows multiple scattering layers within the same scene, making it easier to place different assets on separate surfaces. It also supports animated objects, so scattered elements can have simple movements, such as swaying, which adds a bit of realism to your scenes without requiring manual animation. The item works with vertex groups and masks, giving you control over where objects are scattered or where they are excluded. It includes viewport calling and uses proxy meshes to help keep the viewport responsive when handling larger scenes. While OpenScatter doesn't have the extensive biome and procedural options like GeoScatter, it covers many essential scattering needs for environment work, and it can be accessible for users who want scattering tools without investing in paid add-ons. And the good thing, it continues to receive updates from the community. Next, we have an add-on called Mass Biome Ground Scatter, which is basically a big, ready-to-use collection for forest floor assets. This one is great if you're building a mossy, overgrown environment. You got 79 different models, and they are all photorealistic, but still lightweight, whether it be used in Blender, VFX projects, or even game engines. It includes all the usual stuff, boss patches, high and low poly, in addition to dead branches, tree trunks, ferns, and a nice variety of stones and a ground cover like sticks and leaves, and of course, some additional other stuff. The Blender version comes with two geometry node setups, one for quick scattering, and another for more advanced features, like custom attributes and even a wind system. There is a demo scene setup to show you how it all works. On a side note, it is only in the Blend file, not included in the FBX or OBJ versions. Anyways, all the assets have clean textures with PBR materials. You can get both 4K and 8K versions, and materials are grouped simply, one for moss, one for dead wood, etc which makes editing and swapping them really easy. In addition, there is support for GeoScatter 5 with a ready-to-install file if you're already using the add-on. It is also game-ready, which is great. So there is a separate folder of triangulated assets placed at the origin, meaning you can just drop them into your engine of choice. And as a bonus, you will get three SDRIs, which are used for previews. Next, we're going to talk about an add-on called Scatter which is a built-in add-on in Blender. We all know that Blender has built-in scattering tools, mainly through its particle system and geometry nodes instancing. They let you distribute objects with some control over density, scale, and rotation. Geometry nodes add more flexibility and customization, but both can get tricky and sometimes slow with large numbers of instances. For many projects though, Blender's native tools do the job without extra add-ons. Last but not least, there is one more free tool worth mentioning that isn't strictly a scattering add-on, but it includes scattering among its features. Bagapi is a free procedural toolkit that offers a scattering system as part of a wider set of tools like modifiers, camera utilities, and boolean operations. While its scattering isn't as specialized or as dedicated as the other scattering add-ons, it handles common scattering tasks reliably enough for general scenes. The paid version of Bagapi also includes an asset pack adding ready-to-use models in addition to some presets that can help speed up your workflow if you decide to upgrade. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.